<clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Um, we're now going to talk about trinomials. Now, I apologize if you see some remnants of um, writing. Um, I do have some problems with the camera that I use. I can only record about two to three videos each time I use it and then I have to shut everything down and then restart it and then record more um, and sometimes the system hasn't made up its mind on whether it wants me to record two videos before it breaks down or three videos before it breaks down so I was on my third video first being the welcome the second being part one and then the third being part two which was this so when I started working on part three for the trinomials, um, I recorded the whole thing for 23 minutes, 22 minutes, something like that. And then um, when I saved it, it gave me an error. So I had to erase everything. So you notice there's like writing here. I tried to erase it really good just so I could re-record everything. But bear with me. This happens every now and then. And so sometimes you might see like little shadows, but I write pretty dark, so hopefully it doesn't um, interfere with what we write next, okay? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but this is the first time it's happened in this class, so I just wanted to mention what was going on and why there was like scribbles on my paper before I even began the video, okay? So for factoring trinomials, okay, essentially what they want us to notice is that a trinomial comes from two binomials being multiplied together. What that means is that trinomials can be factored into two binomials. Okay? What I want you to notice though is that when I multiply this, I get 6x squared minus 8x plus 3x and minus 4. Before I combine these like terms, notice that what I have is four terms. And we just discussed in the last video how to factor polynomials that have four terms. Therefore, if I want to factor a trinomial, my um, strategy is going to be to convert a trinomial into a polynomial four terms. Now here's the issue, 6x squared minus 5x minus 4. There are an infinite number of ways that I can break up negative 5. Instead of using negative 8 and positive 3, my mind might have used negative 3x and negative 2x, which combine to give me negative 5. However, this will not work when I try to factor it by grouping. I could have also done something outrageous like negative 105x plus 100x minus 4. These also combine to give me negative 5. But again, when I try to do the AC, the uh, grouping method, it's not going to work. Okay? So there are, I mean, an infinite number of things. I could have done a negative 1 million and 5 plus 1 million, and I still would have got negative 5x. But how do we find out, how do we know to use negative 8 and positive 3x, right? That's the thing, because that's the combination that will allow me to factor by grouping that will result in those two binomials. So how do we come up with specifically that pair, right? There is a method, and it's called the AC method, okay? So in your trinomial, you will talk about this coefficient being A, this coefficient, which is a negative 5, being B, and then this coefficient, or this constant, being C. And you have to include the signs, okay? So if I take A times C. That's where the words AC method comes from. If I take A times C, I'm going to get 6 times negative 4, which is negative 24. And if I find all the factors of negative 24, 
that is going to be a much shorter list than all the things that combine to give me negative 5. So let's see. 1 times 24. 2 times 12 is 24. 3 times 8 is 24. 4 times 6. 5 does not go into 24 evenly, and 6 is already on the list, so that's the end of my list. I have four possibilities now here, okay? Now, remember, we're trying to get a negative 5. So, we want to obtain a negative 5 after I combine. In order for that to happen, that means that the bigger number needed to be negative. So this sign here in the middle will always tell you the sign of the numbers in this column because this column will always be your bigger numbers. So you put negative, 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 negative. Then you determine, based on what you have up here, what sign the numbers in this column need to be. So remember, I did 6 times negative 4 and got a negative 24. The only way for this product to become negative 24, knowing that this guy is negative, is if this guy is positive, which means all of my first column ent entries need to be positive. So that when I multiply them by these negative numbers, I do in fact end up with negative 24. So you do have some thinking that you gotta do, okay? Um, then we need to find the pair that actually adds to give us negative five. 1 and negative 24 adds to give us negative 23. 2 and negative 12 adds to give us negative 10. 3 and negative 8, those combine or add to give me negative 5. So those are the magic numbers we use. Now how do we use them? Split this term up using those two coefficients. So instead of negative 5x, you should be using positive 3x and a negative 8x. The first two terms, though, we're not manipulating, so those we're just going to bring down. Signs and all, okay? And now that we have um, something with two terms in it, we're going to group it. So this side has a three and an x in common. So we end up with two x plus three divided by three is one. Here you have to put the minus sign. These guys have a four in common. So if I divide by negative 4, that becomes a positive 2x. This becomes a positive, and 4 divided by 4 is 1. They seem to have this 2x plus 1 in common. So when I factor that 2x plus 1 out, I end up with 3x minus 4. And notice that this does match the factors that we had there, right? But again, you have to figure out how to turn that trinomial into a polynomial with four terms before you'll be able to use the existing knowledge we already have, which is factoring by grouping, okay? So let's try to use that information to do the following problems. So here. Always check to see if you have a greatest common factor before you start trying to factor the polynomials. So here, 5, 4, and 12 don't have any factor in common, and this doesn't have any z's, so I can't factor out any z's as well. So I'm going to do my a coefficient times my c constant, and I get negative 60. So 1 times 60, 2 times 30, 3 times 20, 4 times 15, 5 times 12, 6 times 10, 7 does not go into 60 evenly, 8 does not go into 60 evenly, oops, 9 does not go into 60 evenly, but 10 is already on the list, so that's the end of the factoring, um, 60. Now, remember, the bigger number is going to have this sign. So all these guys are going to be positive. But I need to end up with a negative, which means these guys would have to be the negatives. And then which ones combine to give me positive 4? These combine to give me 59, 28, 17, 
11, 7, these are the ones that give me a positive 4. So we're going to split this term up using these coefficients. So keep your 5z squared, and now we're going to use negative 6z, positive 10z, minus 12. We're going to chop that in half. This side has z in common, leaving me with 5z minus 6. Bring down the plus. This side can be divided by 2. So we're dividing by a positive 2. And we end up with positive 5z and a negative 6. So they have this 5z minus 6 in common. And that leaves me with z plus 2. And so this is the factored answer. Now let's do the same thing with the next one. So again, no GCF here. So 3 or 12, 12 times negative 3, <clears throat> excuse me, is negative 36. So we have 1 times 36, 2 times 18, <clears throat> excuse me. 3 times 12, 4 times 9, um, 5 will not go into 36 evenly, right? But 6 will. 6 times 6 is 36. And since you already have a number on this side that's on the left-hand side, you do need to stop. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, here, the bigger number needs to be negative. So these guys will all be negative. And then because I need to end up with a negative, these numbers should remain positive. And now we need to go through this list and find the ones that add to give us negative 5. So this will give me negative 35. That will give me negative 16. That will give me negative 9. These will give me negative 5. So then we split this up using these coefficients. So first term stays the same, and this will become a positive 4t, a negative 9t, and then my constant stays the same. So factor by grouping. This side has a 4 and a t in common, leaving me with 3t plus 1. This minus has to come down. This side has a 3 in common. So leaving me with positive 3t and a positive 1. They obviously have the 3t plus 1 in common. So if you take that out, you end up with 4t minus 3. And this is the factors for that problem. Now, this problem, we do not have a GCF. 3, 15, and 16 cannot all be divided by the same number. So we do this, we get 48. We have 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, 5 does not work, 6 and 8, 7 does not work, and 8 is already on the list. So stop. Now let's find the bigger number needs to be negative. But because when I multiply, I need to end up with a positive 48, that means these guys would also have to be negative. And which ones give us 15? That gives me negative 49, negative 26, negative 19, negative 16, and negative 14. None of these work. When that happens, as long as you did this product correctly, you have all the numbers in the list, right? And I've shown you how to make sure you get all of the numbers in the list, um, and none of them work, then the only thing to do is to say that the polynomial is prime. Okay, remember that from page one when they talked about um, factoring. They said a polynomial with variable terms that cannot be written as a product of two polynomials of lesser degree is a prime polynomial. So in my math lab or in your homework, you just say this polynomial is prime. You've done everything correctly and you just can't find that magic, num that magic pair 
to break this up to be able to factor it. Okay. Now the last problem. The last problem does have um, a GCF. They these numbers can all be divided by three. And if I factor out that three, I get eight x squared plus fourteen x plus five. Okay. And one quick rule, I'm not sure if anybody knows, but to determine divisibility by three, if you add the digits together and you get a number divisible by three, then the whole number is divisible by three. So two plus four is six, and six can be divided by three. Four plus two is six, and six can be divided by three. One plus five is six, and six can be divided by three. So if the sums can be divided by three, then all three of these numbers can be divided by three. That's how I knew that three went into all these numbers because 42 is a little odd, right? It's definitely not in my times tables. I don't memorize my times tables up to 14, okay? But I did use a quick rule that I learned about divisibility um, to understand or to know that three went into all three of those numbers. Okay, um, but we have to continue to see if we can factor this trinomial inside the parentheses into two binomials. So I'm no longer going to be looking at the original. I'm going to be looking at what's inside this parentheses. And so I'm going to take 8 times positive 5 and I get positive 40. So 1 times 40 2 times 20, 3 will not go into 40, 4 times 10, 5 times 8, 6 will not go into 40 evenly, 7 will not go into 40 evenly, and 8 is already on the list, so we've got them all. Then the bigger number needs to be positive, and since I need to get a positive, the smaller numbers will also have to be positive. And if I combine these, this is 41, this is 22, this is the 14 I'm looking for. So then I'm going to break this up using these coefficients. So first term stays the same. And then we get positive 4x, positive 10x, and my constant stays the same. Chop that in half. We get 4x in common, which means I get 2x plus 1. Here, bring down the plus. I have two in common. That's going to give me a positive 2x. Oh, they have a five in common, too. <clears throat> and that will give me a positive one. And then they have the 2x plus one in common, which leaves me with 4x plus five, right? But this is not the final answer. Why not? because you factored out a GCF from the very beginning. So always remember that whenever you factor out the GCF, you have to include it in your final answer. Because if you multiply this out, yeah, you'll get the 8x squared, but you won't get 24x squared like you're supposed to for the original problem. So you definitely need to remember, whatever you factored out as a GCF, you have to bring down to your final answer. That's a very common mistake. You'll have done all the hard work to factor this thing and then just made a mistake because you forgot to bring down your common factor, your GCF from the very beginning, okay? Now, um, there is another couple of problems. They could look weird. This is still a trinomial. You don't need to rememorize more formulas, okay? We already have a process and this process works. So you don't need to memorize more formulas. Just do it the old way. So I'm gonna take 49 and positive four. 49 times four. I get 196. So one times 196, two times, who knows, 98, three, nope, four, yep. Five will not work. Let's see about six. Nope. Um, let's see about seven. That one should work. Yep. 
Um, I don't think eight is gonna work. Nope. Um, nine. Nope. Ten's not gonna work. Eleven. No. Twelve. No. Thirteen. No. Fourteen does work. And because I got 14 on the other side, you can stop, okay? So which of these is going to give us positive 28? It's going to be 14 and 14. Now remember, this tells me the sign of this column, and since I need a positive 196, I knew these had to be positive as well. So I didn't put any negatives on anything. Now here, we're gonna use those coefficients. So this term stays the same. This will become positive 14xy plus positive 14xy. And then bring down your last term. Factor by grouping. These guys can be divided by 7 and an x, which leaves me with 7x plus 2y. Bring down my plus sign. These guys can be divided by 2 and a y. So I get positive 7x and I get positive 2y. And then we have 7x plus 2y in the parentheses there. And if I factor those out, I get 7x plus 2y again. When the factor is the same, remember we have a shorter way of writing that. And that's by putting a square. So notice that everything I did is exactly the same thing as I did before. The only thing different is that if you match, you write them as 1 with a square. That's it. So there's nothing extra you need to memorize. There's nothing extra you need to do other than if they match, put a square. That's it. Okay. So let's do the last one. Um, this one, unfortunately, is a really, really, really big number, but it's okay. We can still work it out. Hmm. Oh, 81 times 25. And that's 2025. Now I could go down the list. I already know where this is going to go. 2 won't work. 3 won't work. 4 won't work. 5 works. 6, nope. 7, no. 8. No. Nine. Oh, three should have worked. I missed three. Yep, 625. But we need the numbers to get closer together if we're going to get 20. So six, no. Seven, no. Eight, no. Nine. Nine might work. Yep but still too far apart. Not close enough to that they'll give me um, 20. <laughs> Let's keep going. So 10, no, 11, no, 12, no, 13, maybe 15. Divided by 15, yep. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nope, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, no, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-five. Okay, 20, I'm gonna try 45. I think 45 is the one. No, not necessarily. I get 45 times 45, which would be the end of the list. So there might be something in between 25 and 45. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. No.
Hmm. This one's a little hard because it's a huge number. 25. Maybe 42. No. So this is three times three times three times like four threes here, and this is two fives. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to come up with all the combinations of these guys. So we already have two of these guys together. There's that. We have one of these guys. That's that. We have one three. That's this guy. Two threes is this guy. Oh, what I don't have is three threes. So let's see. I get 27 and 75 and then of course four threes would be the 81 which is on this side um, and then if I put this two together I get 15 which I have there if I put two fives and a three I get 75 if I put two threes and a five that's 45 which gave me this nine times 25 9 times 25 is 225, which is already there. That's 27 which times 5, which is already there. And then 27 times 25 is 625. And then that should be it. I don't know what else to use, but I'm not getting negative 20. So this one, unfortunately, even though I went through all the numbers here and all the possibilities, um, this one, you cannot come up with negative 20. So this one is going to be what they call prime. So it was a huge number and we had to go way down the list, all the way to 45. And as long as that took, it's fine because you need to know for sure whether something is prime or not. You don't want to prematurely say that it's prime and it's not prime. You just didn't take enough time to go through all the possibilities here to determine whether it was prime or not. Okay. So in the next video, we're going to cover something called factoring binomials. Um, and then that should be the last video in this um, section.